Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about PR interval. We learned about P waves, the abnormalities in P waves last class. Now we are going to discuss about PR interval. We know that from SA node to AV node, current passes. From SA node to AV node, current passes. And that time, that time is here you are seeing PR interval. So normally PR interval means the onset of P to the onset of, to the onset of QRS. From the onset of P to the onset of QRS. And this is PR segment. From after P to QRS is PR segment. The total duration is PR interval. Normally when we are seeing ECG, you are seeing small small uh, grids in that. So three small squares are the minimum and maximum is five small squares. So three to five small squares is the time taken in an ECG paper for conduction of current from SA node to AV node. So three to five small square has to be there when you are calculating PR interval. That will be around 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. So three to five small squares. If the that the gap between P to QRS that is more than 5 it is abnormal if it is less than 3 it is abnormal first we will see what is uh, if it is less than 3 small squares what is the problem if it is more than 5 we will discuss afterwards so if uh, suppose uh, this uh, the, no, you know that the current is coming from the SA node to AV node through a regular pathway it takes some time so minimum 3 squares will take maximum 5 squares will take but if there is an accessory pathway like this, accessory pathway means that will be faster than the regular pathway. So if there is an accessory pathway, the time taken from SA node to AV node will come down significantly. So what happens is P to QRS onset is very short, less than 3 small squares, less than 0.12 seconds. So if the PR interval if short, less than 3 squares, we can call it as there is a accessory pathway. Normal, normal what we are seeing in clinical practice is Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Other syndrome is Long Ganong Levin syndrome. We will not be discussing that, but there is a difference between WP and LGL syndrome. We will see first WPW syndrome. So, whenever we are taking an ECG, and if you are seeing there is a short PR interval and if there is a wide QRS complex with a slurring of the upstroke of the R wave that is called as delta wave. Delta wave is the slurring in the upstroke of the R wave because of the conduction passing through an accessory pathway. So PR interval is short less than 3 small square. There is a delta wave, wide QRS complex. Following that there is a ST depression T wave inversion. That is a classical finding you see in Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. This is type a uh, type of uh, WPW syndrome but in ECG if you are seeing a, a negative QRS complex following that P wave then it is type B where whatever it is here also you can get a delta wave there is a slurring in the uh, down slope of the QRS complex but this is a classical case of uh, WPW syndrome WPW syndrome means the classical finding will be short PR interval less than 3 squares and there is a slurring in the upslope or downstroke of the QRS complex that is called as delta wave. Then QRS complex itself is void. Then after the uh, QRS there is ST depression T wave inversion. Now we should understand what is the problem of this WPW syndrome. You know that uh, this is a regular pathway. When the pathway is regular, normal conduction happens. But there is an abnormal pathway here which is faster than the regular pathway what happens is sometimes the re-entry will occur here because it is very fast during conduction re-entry can occur if re-entry occurs this patient can go to supraventricular tachycardia the problem of WP identifying the uh, uh, identifying WPW syndrome in ECG is very very important because this patient can anytime throw a tachycardia that is supraventricular tachycardia this is called as re-entrant tachycardia AV re-entrant tachycardia so AV junction re-entry will occur patient will develop tachycardia so this tachycardia can be a wide complex tachycardia so you know that wide complex tachycardia we should not use drugs like uh, diltiazem, verapamil or beta blockers 
because these drugs can sometimes block the regular pathway and that will the only available pathway will be the abnormal accessory pathway so the patient can have a abnormally increased number of uh, uh, reentrant tachycardia heart rate may sometimes increase so in the, this type of cases amidron will be good choice but there are some uh, wpw syndromes we can use it but i am not discussing that here for general acls purpose when you are getting a wide complex tachycardia you go for amidron to control the rate and rhythm so what we have discussed here is the onset of current from sa node that travels to av node the time taken from sa node to av node is pr interval that is onset of p2 onset of qrs complex 3 to 5 small squares are the normal uh, time taken in ecg paper that is 0.12 to 0.2 seconds if pr interval is shorter there is an accessory pathway it is classically called as wpw syndrome or long ganang levin syndrome <laughs> wpw syndrome there is slurring of the upslope of the qrs complex wide uh, qrs complex then st depression t wave inversion whereas lgl syndrome this part you will not see only short pr interval is there so short pr interval always indicates an accessory pathway that you should remember short pr interval indicates an accessory pathway any time this patient can go for a reentrant tachycardia in reentrant tachycardia due to this type of uh, accessory pathways will be wide complex tachycardias there are the regular drugs what we use in svt like beta blockers diltiazem verapamil may, may sometimes produce uh, problems so you can go for amidron that is according to acls protocol but if you know in details some of the conditions where wpw syndrome we are dealing you can even give these drugs that we are not discussing that here so that is about short pr interval now if the pr interval is prolonged what will happen we'll see now we have discussed that from sa node to av node current is traveling like this if there is a problem in this conduction there is some delay in this conduction what happened to this uh, this in ecg we'll see so normally you are seeing p2 qrs complex is 3 to 5 small squares if there is a problem here there is a delay in conduction in the sa node to av node what happens you can just imagine this will get prolonged maybe more than 5 small squares that is that is known as first degree heart block we'll be uh, talking about heart blocks in detail afterwards so first degree heart block means prolonged pr interval prolonged pr interval indicates there is a problem in the conduction pathways but it is not a severe problem it can be due to some drugs like beta blockers diltiazem verapamil digoxin viral fevers viral myocarditis rheumatic fever acute rheumatic fever is one classical condition where you get uh, prolonged pr interval ischemic heart disease so many conditions degenerative heart disease so many conditions you can get same type of problem so that is about first degree heart block so you, we learned now two important things pr interval we learned three to five small squares if it is short then you suspect a accessory pathway when it's wide there is a problem in the conduction that is first degree heart block so we learned about short pr interval that is classically seen in accessory pathway a prolonged pr interval indicates first degree heart block that can be due to some drugs viral fevers viral myocarditis then rheumatic fever is one classical condition where you get first degree heart block so we learned about problems in the pr interval now pr segment is a segment sometimes it can go up or down pr segment elevates is suppose uh, there is uh, atrial mi you can get pr segment elevation or patient who is having myocarditis you can get all these things but we are not going to discuss that because that clinically it is not that important 
द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स इन पी आर इंटरवेल इज शॉर्ट पी आर इंटरवेल लॉन्ग पी आर इंटरवेल दिस टू थिंग्स वी शुड रिमेंबर ओके सो वी आर डिस्कस्ड अबाउट पी आर इंटरवेल 